For the last decade or so, the number of new riders has stagnated a bit. Even as our population grows faster and faster, the number of people willing to throw a leg over a motorcycle has not. To the average person, this may not seem like much of a problem, but to the motorcycle industry, it is. So what's being done not only to get more adults on two wheels, but kids as well? Let's take a look. In the last few years, I've definitely seen downturn in ridership. Now, this is pre-pandemic when we started uh, developing this program. Uh, and it, it's not as much downturn as it was just stagnant. It had gotten to a point where there was, you know, so many riders in and, and even though population was going up and more people are driving for longer periods of time, stuff like that, the sales of motorcycles sort of like were sitting at a, at a level, right? So they didn't really fundamentally recover from the financial crisis of 2008 and nine. You know, the challenge within the industry is how do you come up with something new and different to address this, not just the, we just have to make it easier. And, and that was really our challenge is how do we make it as easy as possible for someone to transition from cycling to a motorcycle. But if we want like a, a, a singular solution to, to increase motorcycling across a generation, it's by making bicycling easier to approach, right? But if you get that ability to ride and balance on two wheels into an elementary school curricula, which is what our All Kids Bike Initiative does, then, um, then that, that ability sticks with them. You know, that six-year-old today in a decade is of driving age. So while we're doing all this other uh, stuff like Discover the Ride and Ride With Us and so on and so forth, we should also, as an industry, be promoting cycling, bicycling, um, to a generation. The easiest way to do that is the All Kids Bike Initiative. And our partnership with Strider and seeing the kids riding around here also speaks to the fact that IMS has always been a family show. Um, we want all different levels of experience. We see plenty of families and kids walking around here because motorcycling is a family and community sport. We all know that. So, uh, many, many kids have never ridden a bicycle who come to this show. We put them on a Strider balance bike and their parents are like, holy cow, I didn't, I didn't know my four-year-old, my five-year-old could ride a bicycle and, and they're, they're out there cruising around. You know, Strider Bikes is really uh, an introduction to two wheels and we want to really boil that bike down to just its essence. So we get rid of the pedals, the training wheels, the motor, anything else, and we're just talking about a frame, two wheels and handlebar and uh, Really, kids uh, straddle that bike, walk along with it, so it's really that first experience um, that introduces them to two wheels. So you've got the 12-inch bike. You can see how little these bikes are, but this rocking base just lets the child rock on that. You pop two clips back here, and you can separate the bike from the rocking base. But uh, bikes are very adjustable, so the seat goes up and down to adjust for the kids. And uh, so you can see at this height, this is very, very small. It's only nine inches. So even uh, almost a newborn would fit on this. Six months to four and a half years old uh, with this bike. Uh, and then they move on to the other bike, transfer their balancing skills onto a bigger bike, and then add the pedals and progress all the way through the pedaling skills. So really uh, from six months to six years and six months, we've got kids covered. The, the kids are sponges. And, uh, and I think that sometimes adult fears of what we can do or we cannot do like spills over into what the kid, and the kid doesn't know. And um, so just with the right tool, and the Strider bike is definitely the right tool, um, that, that child gets the seat to handlebar relationship. They start walking along and all of a sudden they're steering and you know, within a few minutes sometimes they're literally starting to put their feet up and, and beginning to, to coast. And that, and that first time as a little kid, if you can imagine, propelling yourself but not with your feet is a really neat thing. I mean, that's like all of a sudden you're flying, you know, and, and that's that feeling we get. Uh, that's that feeling we get on a motorcycle. Um, that can be that seed can be planted really really early and we should be working towards more of that discover the ride um, is something that we've been wanting to do for a long time uh, 
the idea came up, it's like, how do we ride motorcycles indoors, right? How do, how do we change uh, that first experience of motorcycle riding? Uh, and about four years ago, uh, Tracy Harris from the show called me up and said, all right, idea man, what, what do you got? And, um, and we came up with a whole bunch of ideas, and one, one, one of them was um, riding electric motorcycles indoors, you know, uh, in, in a speed limited format where uh, uh, people who maybe had never ever ridden a motorcycle before can feel safe riding a bike. And so when we started digging into how do we do that, that's where we really came up with speed limited electric motorcycles on a carpeted course at that time indoors uh, and, um, and really developed that into a program that has been a catalyst for the motorcycle industry uh, and to get that many more new riders. It's particularly easy with uh, an electric motorcycle to speed limit and then to acceleration limit. So mechanically that can be done it with like scooters and, and, and even electronically with motorcycles uh, to put a spacer into a scooter transmission so it can only go so fast, right? And then you put another spacer into the throttle assembly so it can only open so much. And at that point, you've effectively emulated one of our training bikes. Um, so in reality, there's a lot of companies uh, and brand, well-known brands that already make product that could be adapted into this experiential uh, kind of thing. Um, so Kawasaki's got bikes, Honda's got bikes, everybody's got, got something that can fit into that, that we can open up the world of motorcycling in a, in a more genteel uh, way than, you know, hey, try not to hit my house when you're riding a bike. Since we started this thing, we're over uh, 15,000 riders have gone through the program in three seasons. Uh, so we're really proud of that number. And of the 15,000, 5,000 or just under 5,000 uh, had never, ever ridden a motorcycle before. And so that first time riding uh, is a, uh, um, that's a key part that the industry talks about a lot. Um, and our, the issue, that we're trying to address is that the traditional beginning riders course generally is like this four day commitment, which is a, it can be a pretty heavy commitment for somebody going like, oh, I don't know if I wanna do this or not, or what. there's no like sort of sampler yeah. in a way. And so um, discover the ride uh, by, by slowing the motorcycles down into a uh, you know, 11 mile an hour top speed and then they accelerate really slowly as well, it removes that sort of fear of unintended acceleration, which we found is a, is a significant issue uh, in people experiencing motorcycling. Um, so that's really the format of this thing, um, is to uh, make it as easy as possible for somebody who doesn't ride a motorcycle to get on a bike and feel the throttle for the first time and experience that, that wind uh, that you're controlling in that way. One of the things we really love is that people who have gone through Discover the Ride will come back to the motorcycle show and we've literally had them come up to registration and they're like, I got my license, you know? And uh, it's, it's just so cool um, to see that. And, and we literally have uh, goosebump moments every day out here because it's not just a matter of, of um, you know, just exposing motorcycling as a category to people, but we literally see the germination of the, holy cow, I can do this. That's the goal of this program, is to let somebody ride a nice, easy motorcycle, and that one brain cell goes, bing, bing, I can do this, and then it starts like, oh man, what kind of bike would I want to ride, and you know, where would I go, and, and it really starts you getting going, but you have to have that first step, and the first step isn't a multi-day, training course, the first step is an experiential program like this with pro instructors, machines that are set up for first time riders and an environment that is there to uplift you as a first time rider. You know, Discover the Ride is, is ending uh, this season, uh, be, not because it didn't work, it's ending because it did work. I, uh, you know, uh, when we first started talking to manufacturers about doing rider training indoors, inside the shows, 
almost everybody was like, no, we can't do that. You know, it, it, it's not the way we make these bikes and stuff like that. And we found an amazing partner in Zero Motorcycles who, who have loaned us tens of thousands of dollars worth of uh, motorcycles uh, and adapted them to do this, right? So we were effectively the, the stone in the pond that created ripples that we're seeing now. So the Ride With Us program is something that was put together by the, by the MIC and the Motorcycle Safety Foundation, and it takes that original like four day BRC or beginner rider course and it squeezes it down into a 30 minute program where you're learning the basics of the clutch. So a big difference between Discover the Ride and Ride With Us is uh, Discover the Ride doesn't have a clutch. There is no shifting on an electric motorcycle. You just kind of twist and go. Um, whereas most traditional motorcycles have a hand clutch and that is another one of those things that makes it difficult to become a rider in a culture where the vast majority of cars are automatic transmission cars, right? So that uh, catalyst uh, reaction we've seen with uh, MSF taking traditional bikes, making a package that's more approachable uh, for more people out there that can fit into a smaller space, um, that can be experiential, um, is also seen in the uh, in a Harley Davidson uh, rider experience program where they have uh, the the Harley Davidson Street 500s that are speed limited in first gear to 12 miles an hour. So again, you've eliminated that sort of fear of it running away, and um, and that same sort of thing can be applied continuously many different brands, many different products out there uh, in order to make. Uh, motorcycling just easier to get into and instead of the one big lesson of clutch and throttle and front brake and rear brake and leaning and head turn uh, like all the stuff you have to go through we can make it much more simple and approachable and and genuinely fix our industry I think it's awesome what the International Motorcycle Shows has been doing over the last several years to get new riders onto motorcycles and even to get kids onto bicycles which is face it that's been dropping off over the years as well. We need to keep our sport vibrant, vital, keep our industry going. And the way we do it is by keeping new riders, getting new riders back into the sport uh, and keeping it alive. And we do that by getting people involved. And you know what? Learning and getting better at what we do. I think it's awesome what they've done over the last few years. And let's hope that they see more and more success with all the programs that they put together. And let's hope that we see you out on the road sometime soon. Now, don't forget to like this video and, of course, subscribe to our channel and click that little notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the latest videos we post to our site.